It's me Blanche and welcome to Feast in the Middle East. This is where I teach you how to make authentic Middle Eastern recipes but with a modern twist for today's busy cook and today I am sharing with you my family's favorite dish of all time. It's called Kusa Mahshi. In the Mediterranean Middle Eastern diet, we eat a lot of vegetables, but let's face it, vegetables can be quite boring on their own. So we like to stuff every vegetable imaginable from bell peppers to artichokes to stuffed grape leaves. And now we have stuffed squash because kusa mahshi means literally stuffed squash. And if you wanna follow along, I have the recipe on page 109 of my cookbook right here. This recipe is my son's favorite, my husband's favorite, my daughter's favorite, my favorite, and I hope it's gonna be your favorite too. Now for this recipe, you want to use Mexican squash, also known as the Magda hybrid squash. The reason why we like to use this particular variety is because it's a little bit sweeter and the shape is perfect for coring out. And I'm gonna show you how excited I was to find the first Mexican squash of the season in the supermarket. So I thought they didn't have kusa, that Mexican squash that we all eat cook with, but anytime you go to an Arab supermarket, look, they're gonna have it, it's right here. So we like to get them kind of smallish, you want them blemish free. This is awesome, they have it, it's the season. It's the season for kusa mahshi, y'all. I know it might seem daunting to create a recipe like this, but once you finish it, you will be so immensely proud of yourself. Every time I smell kusa mahshi in my kitchen, it reminds me of being in my grandmother's kitchen in Bethlehem. Nothing smells like a Levantine kitchen in Jordan, in Syria, Palestine, Lebanon, than a great big pot of kusa mahshi. So with that, let's get started and I'll show you how easy it is to really make. First, I start with a fresh tomato puree. This is a game changer to make the tomato broth as flavorful as possible. And tomatoes are in season right now, so use as little or as many tomatoes as you want. I generally use about three, and if there are chunks in there, don't worry about it, it will cook down in the broth. Another trick I like to use is to soak the rice for about 30 minutes, and then I rinse the rice several times using a sieve to remove extra starch. I'm using about a cup and a half of short grain style rice because I think it works the best in this recipe. Now we're ready to create the filling. Add the rice to a bowl and then add a tablespoon of melted butter and mix well. I love to add about a tablespoon of chopped fresh mint, which removes any gaminess from the lamb I'm about to use. Then add about a teaspoon of salt or salt to taste. You can use regular pepper, but if you know my family and I, we're all about the lemon pepper for that lemony flavor, so I add a dash of that as well. Then add a half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and one teaspoon of allspice. Remember that tomato puree we mixed up earlier? Take about a quarter cup of it and add it to the filling. Finally, I add one and a half cups of ground lamb. Now, if you have a little bit of extra time, it is better to use cubed lamb if you wanna cut the lamb in small cubes because it'll prevent the lamb from sticking together with the rice, but whatever you have time for, it will turn out delicious, trust me. I like to mix everything with my hands so it's well incorporated. Use gloves if you don't want raw lamb funk under your fingernails. Now it's time to core out the zucchini. Now you can do this on a separate day if you wish. Use a vegetable core to take out the inside of the zucchini. And in Michigan, where there's a large Arab population, they actually sell the zucchinis already cored out to save you time. Or you can use a power tool but don't sever any fingers because the only kind of meat you want in this dish is the lamb meat, okay? Now you're probably wondering, what do I do with this leftover zucchini pulp? Well, you can either make zucchini bread with it or some savory Middle Eastern style zucchini pancakes called edja, and I will put a link for that recipe right here for your reference. Now it's time to season the broth. I use about a pound of lamb shoulder or lamb chops. A little bit of lamb goes a long way to season the broth. I just add some salt and pepper and put them at the bottom of the pot. 
And now it's time to fill up that zucchini. Fill up each zucchini about three quarters of the way. You don't want to overstuff them so they don't explode while cooking. And you don't want to pack too much rice in there so that the rice has room to expand while cooking. Just stack them in there with the cut size up so the filling doesn't escape. Now it's time to add the tomato puree, then several cloves of garlic sliced in half. Season with about two teaspoons of salt because it is gonna be a large pot of broth. And for a richer tomato broth, add a half a can of tomato sauce or a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste. Then fill the pot up with water, leaving about three inches off the top. There is always room for extra seasoning, so feel free to add some pepper, a couple of dashes of allspice, and you are on your way. Put the pot over high heat and wait for the water to boil. Then reduce the heat and simmer for about an hour. Two hours later. Uh, yeah, sometimes uh, family can't even wait to eat it. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> he doesn't, he's in a rush and uh, he's eating all the go. I hate when he has to do this, but sometimes it's just a necessity, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> And the sauce too. And the sauce too. Okay, yeah. So family uh, gives it a thumbs up, that's for sure. Just want to put you on notice before the comments start flooding in that my husband doesn't usually eat dinner like this. He just happened to be super starving coming home from work. I made him his favorite dish. The whole kitchen smells of kusa mahshi. So all bets are off in this situation. <laughs> Now to follow along with our cooking family, be sure to grab a copy of my cookbook, Feast in the Middle East, over a hundred pages of glossy photos and easy instructions. I will put the link up for you so you can grab a copy yourself. Until next time, happy cooking, sahtin, and I'll see you soon. Just wanted to thank Reda Naturals for sponsoring today's videos. Now I love Reda Naturals because they're made in Lebanon, they're based on traditional recipes made with all natural organic ingredients. These products are free of synthetic fragrances, as well as dyes, parabens, sulfates, and phthalates, and other harmful ingredients. Some highlights are a great starter kit for babies. Their baby products only have ingredients like almond oil, coconut oil, and they're unscented to leave baby skin soft without harsh chemicals. They have a shampoo, shower gel, lotion, and body soap. They also have a body oil collection with fragrances like incense and lavender. They have soaps with pure ingredients like herbal water as well as coconut or olive oil. They have a pleasant and mild smell which cleanses without drying your skin. If you're a distributor or retailer of organic products and would like to onboard this brand, mention my channel or name Blanche and get 7% off the wholesale price of your first commercial order.